Hello guys, today we're gonna repair a pool controller that somebody gave to me without much of an explanation what's not working. Uh, it's called a SwimPure RJ from Hayward and we see a couple of LEDs on top and also an LCD display and a switch and an adjustment knob. Now when we remove the top cover and power it up there is some flashing red LED. No relays clicking or anything and this goes on for a little while and as we can see the power LED doesn't light up. That's the first green LED from the top. There's not much we could check on this board except for the relay contacts and coils maybe. This board has at least two layers and they put conformal coating everywhere for protection. One thing that caught my eye was this big black component here. It's an inrush current limiter also known as an NTC thermistor. This model here should have about 2 ohm at room temperature. The model number is AS322R025 and it's apparently very common since you can buy them about everywhere on eBay or Amazon. For example I got mine from DigiKey. So we measure it with a multimeter. Uh, don't forget to unplug the power before doing that. And it reads about 1.5 mega ohm. That's definitely too much. This part is broken. Now in order to see if anything else is broken, I sold a smaller one I had in stock across the broken NTC. It's not really necessary to do this because it's definitely defective, the bigger one. Now the resistance is good. We turn the power on and as we can see there's a relay clicking and the power LED turns on also. We unplug the power again and remove the controller board. Now I would wait a few minutes to be sure the big capacitors are discharged. That's the two big brown cans on the power board. I'm actually not sure how long that would take, uh, but a few minutes should be sufficient. Now just press together the clips at the top of the plastic standoffs that hold the controller board. Next thing is to unscrew the power board and flip it. Now we have to remove the faulty thermistor. Use a soldering iron of, I would say, at least uh, 60 watt because these solder pads are good heat dissipators. You can add some tin to get better contact also. After that we have to clean the holes. You can use a desoldering pump or a suction pump for that. I don't have one so I use solder wick. So here we have it. It was cracked and broke into two parts when I removed it. This is the new one, same model number. Other models would certainly do too, but it's a very common type. You shouldn't experience any problems finding them. We put it through the holes and solder it back on the board. You should use a good amount of solder to make sure there's good contact between pins and the board. Then cut off the rest of the long terminals.
and finally we mount the board back into the housing and after powering it up it works again there's this initial delay which seems to be normal according to the manual and then it will show that there's no flow and so on because there's nothing else connected to the controller box however the power LED is on and that's it for now yeah thanks for watching guys and if you enjoyed the video click the like button and subscribe for more repair videos Thanks.